What an absolute cracking view. They don't come better than that. So you probably wouldn't believe it right now, looking at the industrial wasteland behind me, but I'm on a World Heritage Site. Now behind me, as you can see there, was an old chemical works. And that plays an important part in today's story. It's an area that's been developed massively over the years. And there are massive plans to open it up again and reinstate the canal basin that was once stood inside it. And here we have the first signs of the canal which we're talking about. This is the, I'm going to pronounce this wrong so I do apologise, the Plas Kynaston Canal. And in 2010, a group was set up to restore it. As you can see it ends here. Tunnel's still intact underneath. So this all leads on to probably the most epic site on, on the British canals. And one that is incredibly famous. So by 1870, the canal, as you can see, comes into the works. It was, the works were fairly small by there. Uh, in 1875 you can see this OS map shows the route more clearly with Trafford Basin just on the left there and you can see the tramways I'll talk about in a minute there as well. In the 1900s you can see the chemical works has, has expanded and this continued to do so for quite some time and eventually the canal was filled in. This is a site as it is now, it's just a, a wasteland. The place I started the video at is where the blue sign is there, that's the car park, but the plan is to bring the canal and the basin back into this. Now this was roughly on the same route as the old one and they reckon the clay bed was still there. It will link the canal back into Kevin Moor as well as some other planned transport upgrades and it will give massive capacity increase at this end for boaters. It currently is a bit of an issue where there's not enough mooring here for, for, for boaters that are coming up to and across the aqueduct. Walking towards the subject of today's video, we come under here, there's the obvious canal footpath what looks like a tramway. I'm not too sure about that. I don't know. I didn't find any info on tramways when I was researching this area. There was quite a lot of different stuff around here, carrying goods up to the hills. Because this is Treffle Basin. And Treffle Basin was effectively the terminus of the canal for some time. The canal was planned to go much further, but it never completed that section. And uh, eventually Tafa built an artificial weir at Horseshoe Falls, just up the canal, and, uh, and watered this section down for it. So where are we going? Where does this lead up to? I said to you, it's the tallest aqueduct in the world. It's the longest aqueduct in the UK. Might give you a clue. We're out of season now. It's uh, late December. So a lot of these boats are sat here. They're holiday boats. And you'll see some big windowed boats. And there for going and viewing what we're going to see now. I'm quite excited and equally as terrified right now. I've got to be honest with you. So here we are, at the, we're at the junction now. And you may start to see it coming up ahead. And here we are. The Ponca Solfte Aqueduct. I hope my very bad Welsh pronunciation has uh, got slightly better because I've been, I've been practicing that for ages. What an epic piece of engineering this is. Must be terrifying on a boat looking out from there. Look, so you'll, you'll be coming across here and you can't really see much at the moment. We're quite still quite close to the ground, but you're just leaning right over that. The raging river below. So this is the River Dee and it carries the Clangoffin Canal over what is the tallest aqueduct in the world, or certainly canal aqueduct. And it's also the longest in the UK, as I said. So the original plan was to construct a series of locks down and back up the other side. But Thomas Telford, being the absolute canal legend that he is, said no. And then him and William Jessup designed this aqueduct, uh, which used to sit on an old road crossing. The perfect thing about this canal is certainly they said there's no locks. They follow the contours so well of the land here. The canal goes off sort of behind that white building. I don't think that's used too much down there. And uh, then follows the contour and eventually goes through a bunch of tunnels, which you would have seen on possibly last week's video. 
all these tunnels, aqueducts, as well as the Cherk aqueduct, meant they didn't need to have tons of locks running through this, through these hills. We're in Wales, North Wales, and you can see all around us that they're, they're, it's mountainous. It's not as mountainous here as it is in sort of further across the Snowdonia, but it's certainly got some hills to contend with. Look at that wild river, look at it. Working its way down the Welsh hillsides and mountains. All that rain we've had over the past few days. Absolutely throwing itself down through the through this, through the bed of that. Look at those piers doing their job, breaking the water up to direct it through rather than channeling below. Absolutely incredible. This wind is getting wild. Let's pop down and have a closer look. It's not just the stunning aqueduct and wow it's stunning. It makes this area so so beautiful. It's just this whole valley. The River Dee's a wild river. And just look at the size of it. It just reaches up to the sky. It's, it's incredible. It's cost around £47,000 at the time to construct, which converted to today's money would be a little over £4 million. There's various translations for the name. Most are uh, like sort of a bridge between hills or a bridge in the sky which are actually incorrect. Uh, the, the actual translation, I, I, I'm, it, it goes deeper into sort of Welsh meaning and stuff like that. But the wind's pretty strong today at the top of the aqueduct. I'm doing my best for drone footage on this, but I, I've got to kind of fly between periods of wind. It does settle down quite a bit at times. I'm obviously being incredibly careful where I'm going today, but uh, if I slipped here, it wouldn't matter. I'll just roll onto this flat piece. It's not so bad. What a view. What an absolute cracking view. They don't come better than that. It's madness to think 200 years ago, they even considered this possible. I mean, Telford was, in, was involved with the Chirk Aqueduct, which you would have seen on my channel. Longdon on turn, which you would have seen on my channel. That proved, that was the second ever cast iron aqueduct trough. And it proved that the concept worked. He was beaten by weeks by, by another aqueduct on that. So this was kind of, those aqueducts brought this to being a possibility, which even now, I mean, can you see any of our engineers doing this? Not a chance. The aqueduct was completed in 1805, having taken 10 years to, to design and build. The ironwork was supplied by William Hazeldean from his foundries at Shrewsbury and nearby Kevin Moore. Kevin Moore is where we started the video and the new canal is going to be put in. The aqueduct is 336 yards long, it's 12 foot wide, 5 foot 3 inches deep and is the longest aqueduct in Great Britain. It consists of a cast iron trough supported 126 feet above the river on iron arched ribs which were done for strength and carried on 18 hollow masonry piers. Each of the spans is 53 foot wide. You can kind of just see the height of it here, it's, it's crazy just how big it really is. Seeing it on pictures and on YouTube and stuff just really doesn't give it give justice to just how big this thing really is. It's, it's incredibly impressive. So when the canal was completed it should have carried on to uh, Moss Valley in Wrexham where Telford had constructed a feeder reservoir in 1796. This would have provided the water for the length of the canal between Trevor Basin and Chester. The aqueduct was supposed to have been a key part of the central section of the proposed Owlsmere Canal, which was going to take a commercial link between the River Severn at Shrewsbury and the Port of Liverpool on the, on the Mersey. Although a less expensive construction course was surveyed further to the east, the westerly high ground route across the Vale of Clankoffen was preferred because it would have taken the canal through the mineral rich coalfields of North East Wales. Only parts of the canal route were completed because the expected revenues required to complete the entire project were never generated. Most major work ceased after the construction of the Pontica Solfte Aqueduct. Just a quick walk down here, just to see. You can walk under the first arch here. A nice view of these arches. So you can see what I mean about the cast iron. So it was built into arches and then structural supports running all the way through it, which support it. And if you see the sort of the trough on the top of those arches, they are angled with that to, to continue the arch. Really is a feat of engineering. And you consider this was built sort of what would have been 200 odd years ago. It's incredible what they did. 
let's have a walk up this other side and see this trough. You can get just a, a towpath from this side and see just quite how close that you are to, uh, to falling, basically. So you've got inches, look. That's all it is, is why is my camera and my, and my microphone before that massive drop off on the side. It's awesome. So from the epic but very windy Pontica Solvete Apitats, have a great day. <laughs>